All right, well, welcome everybody. You're at Branding You, which uh, hopefully that's where you're supposed to be. Tonight we're going to be talking about um, what it means and what it takes to put together your own personal branding statement. And I know that I've emailed with some of you to talk about what your desires are coming out of uh, this workshop. Some of you were late add-ons, which is perfect, I'm fine. We can talk about it. Hopefully we have a little bit of time to talk about that. Um, but why don't we go ahead and get started. Like I said, I want to be respectful of the very short now uh, time that we have together, and I want to get you out of here on time. So welcome. I'm a big fan of quotes. So um, I want you all to notice this quote by George Bernard Shaw. Life isn't about finding yourself. Life is about creating yourself. And that's really what a personal branding statement is. Okay, we'll talk about that tonight. It's not about what your neighbor says. It's not about what the marketplace says about you. It's really about you and who you are. Some ground rules tonight. Can you see, am I in your way? No, okay. <laughs> Some ground rules tonight. This is really a safe space for all of us to share. Uh, unfortunately, like I said, we're together for an hour, so I'll be doing most of the talking, but I hope we do have some time to have some interactive discussion. Everything in here remains confidential. It's very important that we listen to one another, obviously. It's like playing in the sandbox. You want to be nice and share and listen. I want you all to dream about what your career, what your professional life can look like, so we don't want to stay in a box. Let's think outside the box and let's be creative. Kind of the point of picking a Muppet or picking a Sesame Street character. Just starting to think outside the box um, and dream a little bit. And then really just to have fun. Anybody who knows me knows I like to have a little bit of fun too. It's not all serious. So why are you here? Again, I heard from some of you. Um, there's a seat up here if there's, uh, you guys are okay. Yeah, we're happy, thank you. Why are you here? I heard from some of you via email why you're here tonight and why personal branding is important to you. A lot of us are going through change right now. The marketplace is changing uh, and we have to adapt. So the reason you're here tonight and what I heard from you is that you're really looking to refine either your personal brand or build your personal brand and build that statement that will give you a little more confidence in the marketplace when you get out there, give you some clarity and give you some focus. Where should you be looking? What should you be doing? How should you be saying it? What should you be saying? And differentiation, right? Looking at your competitors and seeing who's out there, what they're saying. How are you different? And we're here tonight to open doors for you. So looking around, this is great networking space too. You should be talking to one another. You know, maybe if you have a few minutes after this workshop, you can meet some folks build some relationships, <coughs> and grow, open those doors, and network. And really, you're here because you want to be motivated, I hope, motivated to create a compelling statement about yourself so you can go out there and really sell who you are. So what is personal branding? I just love that picture of that woman because she's building something, obviously. And that's really what you need to do when you start thinking about who you are and what your personal brand is. Anybody here um, have a personal branding statement that they use when they go out and they network or they have on their resume currently that they'd like to share? Or I have one that I end my emails with. I'm a real estate agent uh, here in town and I, um, I use your real estate resource. Okay. Kind of flat for me though. <laughs> Hasn't done much. <laughs> well, what you're saying is you're the go to gal. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And actually, in some, um, if you talk to some marketing gurus, they would say, why don't you just say, I'm the go to gal, have some fun with it, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, again, it's, it's really what you feel comfortable with. Sure. But also going back to having some fun and um, differentiating yourself. I'm not saying that's the answer, but again, it's something, a different way of looking at it. Right. Anyone else? Want to share? No? That's okay. You will be starting a, person, a, a branding statement tonight by the time you leave. So a statement is about who you are, what you want, where you're going, and how you're going to get there. Okay? 
pretty straightforward, pretty simple, right? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So really, your personal branding statement is going to provide a solution for a company or for an individual. But let's talk about what a personal branding statement is not. Anybody have any ideas? I'll start us off. It's not a mission statement. It's not a resume. It's not a resume, right? It's not a job description. So if someone were to say to you, what do you do, right? You may list a bunch of skills from your job, kind of like a job description, but personal branding statement might be a little more compelling, right? Provide a little more clarity. What else? It's not your career objectives. Okay. Would be your vision? Maybe. There are four steps. These are really simple, but also complex. <laughs> four steps. The first, and I've had this discussion with some of you. I talk about this a lot when I do my one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching and also leadership development work, and that is to look within. Now this sounds really simple, but this is, at least from my perspective and a lot of people that I read, this is really the biggest aspect of personal branding. You want to look within. You want to reflect and you want to think about what are my personal values, right? What are my personal values? What are my attributes? What kind of, what do I bring to the table? And then your passions. I feel like this is so different from when I was coming out of school, no one was talking about this. Certainly when I was in high school, no, was, no one was talking about, what are you passionate about? You can get a job in that. No one was saying, what are your values? What are your five core values? Why don't you go out and try to find a job that aligns with those values? No one said that. Is, did anybody have a different experience? Because I'd love to hear about it. <laughs> Right? So, step one is to look within. So what I'm gonna have you do right now with the papers that are in front of you, I want you to start thinking about your personal values, the attributes that you're maybe most known for or most proud of, and your passions, okay? So let me just give you an example of this because I can really, you know, I do my best work when I'm given examples. Um, about seven years ago, I hired a professional coach to really um, reimagine my business and reimagine myself. I wasn't happy with where I was. I wasn't happy with the clients I was working with. I thought I'm either going to shoot them or I'm going to shoot myself because. <laughs> I was in a bad state. And she said to me, all right, well, let's take a look at your values. Let's just go really deep. And I thought, what, what do values have to do with clients? And I mean, I get it. Yeah, values. Easy enough. Family, health, honesty, OK? And I went through values. And she said, no, 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 no. Back up. When I'm talking about values, I want you to think about values and your passions as if no one else is in the room. No one else can judge you. No one else will hear you. I want you to think about what you would say if no one else was around, if society wasn't there to judge you. And I thought, well, that's ridiculous. I don't, we don't live in that world. And she said, no. 
you need to think about this. And don't, let's just assume family is a part of every value you put out there. Of course, your mother. Family is important. Your friends are important. And after, you know, we only have a short time together tonight, and I won't bore you with all the details, but at the end of our coaching session, and it took about two coaching sessions, and it was quite painful, I came up with my five, top five values. The first one is freedom, okay? The second one is health and wellness. The third one is relationship. And I'll just stop there because that's actually where we're gonna end up once we get done with this activity here. And what I realized about myself and about my business was I didn't have freedom. And I certainly didn't feel well anymore and I didn't feel healthy, especially with the clients I was working with, the decisions I was making for those clients, with those clients. And I didn't feel like I was working in relationship anymore. There was no relationship. It altered my business. I was able to start saying no and creating more space and more time to say yes to the better clients. Now, my husband wasn't happy about me saying no to money, but I was happier. And then I could go after the business that worked for me. And I was able to integrate those values then into my personal brand, into my website, into my marketing, okay? It freed me. So, when I have you look at these post-its, I want you to really think about your values, your attributes, what are they? What are some of the things that you feel good about? Are you compassionate? Are you collaborative? That kind of thing. Um, and your passions. For me, you know, my passions are working out, racing, um, I don't know, I'm not gonna bore you, but things that really light you up, all right? So I'm gonna give you, a, again, it's a short, very short time period, but I'm gonna give you about four to five minutes to write 10 of them down, okay? So think about it, we'll write 10 of those down. You mean 10 in each category? No, 10 of any of these. One of each category. Yes, yep.
last one. Yeah. I know, that's it. That's it now. It's over. Hey. <laughs> well, you think it's over. Huh. But now I want you to pull out your top three and put the other two with the other five. And what I would say is that these top three are the things that you most connect with, most light your fire, most feel like your values, like you would feel not yourself if they were not in front of you or part of you. something or you're selling yourself or your inter interview, this is the one thing you can feel like is part of your core. This is your foundation, your personal brand. Okay, now, um, like I said, you know, I had my top five and I also had a top ten and I still use those things and I, those are a part of me, but just for our experience here tonight, you know, it's really important to focus on three. Um, and again, just to achieve what we want, we want to achieve tonight in terms of a personal branding statement, this will help us, we will all come together and help us focus. Step two, dress for the job you want. This is a figure of speech. But I want you to start thinking about, now that we just went through and pulled up our three, I want you to start thinking about your immediate needs and what you want to be doing in 5, 10, 15 years down the road. It's going to be different for all of us. And how you can use these things to, to grow into that timeline. And this is where we, we start to get strategic, all right, in our personal brand. The first thing we want to do, we want to get on the internet, we want to start to do the research. We want to start to take a look at, all right, whether it's a new industry that you're in, again, I'm. Um, speaking to people emailed me with different things that they want to do with their careers or with their personal lives so uh, you know some people are looking to move into different industries some people are looking to get promoted some people are looking to really refine their marketing message some people are looking to grow their business I mean, we have entrepreneurs in the room we have stay-at-home moms in the room we're looking to get back into the workforce we have people who are looking to change um, jobs completely and go into a new field of work. So you're going to want to start doing the research and start taking a look around and get online and look at who your competitors are. Right? So look at this new industry you're looking into, look at uh, maybe the different organizations out there that would be competitors, products, services. Where are they going? What are they doing? How are they dressing? What are they saying? Who are they networking with? Where are they networking? What are they saying at those networking functions? It may mean that you have to actually get out there and really just listen, right? <coughs> so the key is during this entire time to remember your three to five top values, attributes, passions, okay? So that you're thinking about your personal qualities, what you bring to the table and how you will exceed, and this is just one example, your employer's expectations. Maybe you're looking to get promoted. Okay, so you're gonna look around and see within your organization, who are your competitors, okay? So 
So how would your personal qualities exceed your potential employer's expectations? Number two, you're going to check assumptions and perceptions. What I mean by that is, and I've done this, this is interesting. Um, have any of you heard of the Johari window? Okay, so if you're in HR or you've been in HR, you've probably experienced this or it's something that you've given to um, potential employees. But <coughs> it's something that you can send out to people. And um, there are words like bold, assertive, aggressive, happy, uh, bright, uh, words like that. And you can find out what other people think of you. Now, they're not nasty words or anything like that. But the point of the experience is to see what other people think of you. Because we all have our own thoughts and opinions on ourselves. But what, what are we assuming? What are we not assuming? I mean, our perception of ourselves is going to be different from, you know, Brett's perception of me. So, for example, when I've done this in the past, I've sent out my Johari window, and by the way, um, the reason I'm getting all of your emails and capturing your information is because I want to send you not only this, but I want to send you the Johari window, too, so you can actually go through, um, go through the experience. But I sent out my Johari window, and um, you know, my words for myself were things like witty, and uh, let's see, what else? Um, oh, yes spontaneous and extroverted, okay? <laughs> what I heard back from other people was really surprising. Nothing bad, but things I would not have thought <coughs> to sell myself as, okay? Like observant. I just would never have thought that about myself. Now I'm a marketer, so I understand that I observe and I analyze but I just would have never used that word, okay? Other words like giving, independent, wise, brave. It took me out of where I was, where I thought I was, thinking about myself, my limiting thoughts of myself, and allowed me to open up, oh, I can start to incorporate those words into my brand, into my business, into who I am, okay? Just gives us a bigger, more expansive view of ourselves, which when you're doing self-actualization work and trying to figure out what, you know, who am I and what do I want my brand to represent, these are words that other people see in you. These are things that other people see in you and they're very important. So you want to check assumptions and perceptions. So check around, ask people, talk to people. The third point. Now, some people think this is just crazy, but I think it's important. Get an ad hoc advisory group. Now that sounds really um, crazy, but it's something that I did and it's something that I do and it's added a lot to my business and it's added so much more to who I am in my personal brand, and that is get an advisory group. Now, it doesn't have to be a really serious advisory group, but I'm talking about professional coaches, okay? Um, gosh, people who just guides in your life. For students, it would be guidance counselors, okay? It could be people who are in HR, who have some of the tools who could help advise you on who you are, where you're going people who can help coach you and help you grow and ask you questions that challenge you, okay? So just like a business, which by the way, you are your brand and I am selling me when I go out and I sell my business, just like I have an advisory group for my business, taking on an advisory group for yourself, and for your personal brand, is just as important. Again, it doesn't have to be some big boardroom with a bunch of people sitting around. We're talking about one or two people who you know can be honest with you. Okay? Step three. Bridging the gap. <coughs> this is very straightforward. Right? So, 
we've done the work of really looking at our values. And by the way, I would encourage you when you leave here tonight and you know for the next few days to you know re-examine the values and the passions and the attributes that you wrote down. <coughs> because it doesn't mean what you wrote tonight is the answer. All right. So you want to look at where you are now compared to where you want to be. So where you are now in terms of uh, where you're employed, uh, if you're staying at home, if you want to, or if you're, uh, you currently own your own business and you want to get back into the corporate world, whatever the story is, you want to grow your business, where are you now compared to where you want to be? How can we utilize the three values that we've just talked about and bridge this gap of where you are now and where you want to be? You need to determine the areas of strength of which you were unaware. So this is going back to you know, having a dialogue with people who may or may not know you, what they see, what they hear, what you should change, what you shouldn't change. Okay, and we're talking about you know um, sitting maybe with an HR person and saying, what do you think of um, you know cause, because personal brand by the way is not just your statement; it's also how you look and what your resume looks like and um, how you communicate. I mean, it's interesting because I talk to a lot of. Uh, undergrad Northwestern students, as well as just in general, young girls who are looking for jobs. And a lot of our discussion is around how they dress and how they talk. Because what I hear from HR people is that these millennials are not showing up how they should be showing up. So again, Determine areas of strength of which you are unaware and make changes if needed. Okay? Identify how businesses want to be served in your industry. Pretty straightforward. You know, looking at your personal branding statement and what you bring to the table and how will you best service that industry or that person or that position, that employer, that kind of thing. And then how can you deliver your value with integrity and authenticity? So I don't know, I'm not gonna ask anybody to raise their hands here, but in you know the workshops that I lead and also in the classes that I teach and the conversations that I have at different networking functions, I have found that there are a lot of unhappy people out there who aren't living in their work an authentic life, okay? So for example, some of the conversations I've had in the past um, with both women and men, they're feeling challenged at work, and this is both, um, you know, this is typically in a, a corporate environment. And what it comes down to is that when we examine their personal values, and then we look at the organization's values, the values don't align. So, of course, there's a feeling of, this is uncomfortable, they don't communicate with me the way that I expect, whatever the case may be, once there's an awareness there of, oh, my values don't align here, you can then make the changes that need to be, it doesn't mean you have to leave a job or anything like that, it just means there's an awareness there and you can then change, make necessary changes or not, okay? So really, um, your personal brand, living into that, and making sure you feel authentic and you feel like that personal brand has integrity. Okay? So, step four, the last step. All right? It's pretty simple. These three questions. And I want you to remember that as you're doing this either tonight or when you go home or when you're at work, your personal branding statement is going to change. Just like everything changes, people change, jobs change, priorities change, it's going to change. So you will refine and you will, uh, your values may change, uh, your passions may change, etc. So I don't want you to feel like whatever you determine tonight as your personal branding statement or tomorrow or within the week is it. 
That's not necessarily true, okay? So the three questions are, what will you do? How will you do it? And why do you do it? So I'm using myself as an example, just to take us through these, these three questions. Like I said, I'm gonna send this to you now that I have your email, so this will be an example that you can play off of. But this is my personal example, and this is focused on one of my top, top values is education and lifelong learning. So it's one of the reasons that I do, I'm here tonight and I do what I do. It really is a passion of mine. Whether it's here talking about personal branding or it's working with young girls and talking about empowerment and leadership, I have something to offer and this is really in terms of leadership and marketing and development work. So this is um, my focus with this example. I could certainly do this with my business and my business is uh, marketing strategy focused on meetings and events. But just to keep things simple and straightforward, this is how you know me tonight. So the question is, what will I do? I will create an energized student who is committed to finding their career calling while being firmly rooted in their examined personal values. So this is true for me when I am here or when I'm with students at Northwestern, or when I'm with a friend talking about their um, next steps in their career, or if I'm speaking to Dominican students. How will I do it? Through workshops and speaking opportunities focused on thoughtful, rigorous questioning and education. And why do I do it? Because I'm a passionate educator with the needs of Dominican University, the future of the marketplace, and the world in mind. And I just really want my voice to grow up in a world where people are aligned with their values and their work. And, and if I can be a part of that, it goes deeper than just that for me, okay? So, my personal branding statement. I'm just gonna set the stage for you because this has happened to me. I'm at a networking function or I'm talking to um, students or I'm talking to someone about a potential speaking opportunity or a workshop, something like that, and they say to me, oh, you do. And this is the moment where you can use your personal branding statement. And I say, well, thank you for asking. I inspire a values-based career approach through workshops and speaking opportunities. And I do it all through th thoughtful questioning and rigorous education. And I'd love to work with you. Okay. Hopefully they have questions. I know some of you, when you wrote back to me, this was the one thing you wanted to drill down to because maybe your next step is um, potentially being promoted. So what are you gonna say in that interview, okay? or your next step is into a completely different industry and you want the confidence to say one sentence that works and speaks to who you are and it's compelling. Um, some of you are looking for that one statement that will help market your business, right? The go-to gal, the resource girl, woman, <laughs> okay? creating that compelling personal brand that makes you different from all the rest, okay? And so, four simple steps, and obviously, you know, we have an hour together, and going through the values, and defining your passions and all that, we do that very quickly. You can spend as much time as you want on that, and I would encourage you to spend more time on that. Uh, because you do want to be thoughtful about it and to make sure that you feel good about your your brand statement, what you're saying to other people and sharing with other people. And remember, this will change. Okay? So, questions? Thoughts? So, as far as that last value statement, that here in an interview, that, that could potentially be an answer to that probably by yourself. Yeah, you know, for me, this has really served as 
um, my foundation when, for example, I was talking about um, when I say no to clients, if I'm with a potential client and something doesn't jive, this right here, um, and this doesn't necessarily jive with uh, my business business, but what I will do is I'll go back to my personal branding statement for my business and I'll see if that client's values and who that person is and who I'd be working with and the project I'd be working on aligns with my personal brand. Because my brand is made up really of my values. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I understand what you mean. Because it seems like that the way that that is done, that it automatically makes the person you're talking to ask questions about it. That's yes. the first thing I thought of when, I, when you spoke it. I thought, well, I don't really know what a whole lot of that means, so tell me more about it. Yeah. So That's then, the hope. Then, tell me more would be a good. You know, and for whatever reason, whatever the motivation, ask the question. And that, right. That's the first thing I thought of was, okay, well, I know a couple of that stuff means. So. Yeah, and you know, when I've used this um, in different networking situations, people will, you know, typically the next uh, question is, oh, were you, where do you teach, or where do you do your workshops, or what are the topics of your workshops, or who do you t who do you tend to work with? And I'm establishing a relationship then, and I'm creating some rapport, and I'm creating conversation. That's perfect. That's great. That's what you really want to do. You want to begin to build that relationship, and they're interested. And so, hopefully, I've created a compelling enough branding statement that it does catch them to ask the next question. You know, in marketing, it's, um, <coughs> well, I won't even go there. <laughs> Other questions or thoughts? How often do you come back and kind of assess what your value statement is and who you are? So like, as things are changing in your life or as different events occur, how often do you go back That's a great question. Um, I tend to do it a lot just because um, things seem to always be changing in my life, whether it's personal or professional. Um, but really, it's less about making changes here and more about, OK, am I on track? Am I aligned with the right people? Am I, I mean, and so this is an example of uh, the work I do um, in education, but I would say with my business, I visit that more often just because I have I have I have opportunities that come down the pipe that I have to make sure they align with my values. Does that make sense? So um, I visit that personal brand more often. So do you have one for one? Do you have one for your my business. education? And then yeah. So that was my next question. Yep. It's funny because I told people that that's how the way I, I approach things for a while. And everybody said that I was great. Oh, really? Well, they should, well you should, if you want that, you should want that. I'm like, why can't you want that? Why can't yeah. you have different things and then have tailor your message to different ways? Yeah. I know, it's logical. Not to the people that I Well, I'm not going to be at you know, a meeting professionals international event, um, I may talk about this, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but that's really where I do my networking and my marketing for my business, is with that association. And so, this is very much a part of who I am, so I do talk about it, if that is, but if I'm, if I am wanting to build my business, then I'm talking, I'm in my sales mode of um, selling my business. So how different is the one for your business compared to that? It's not very different because the values are still the same, right? Just I mean, my values and my, um, my passions around business and live entertainment and live meetings, I mean, that's different. 
and actually education is very much a part of the meetings and the events that I do. And so I feel more passion around meetings and events that um, where there's a sharing of knowledge. So. so what I wanted to do was to spend the last 10 or 15 minutes having you all write your branding statement if there aren't any other questions, or at least starting the process. Do you feel comfortable doing that? Because I will tell you, once you walk out of here tonight, getting back into it and into that mode might be difficult. So at least start the process, and here's what I would suggest, is going back to those three questions, writing those down, and I'll, I can put it back to um, my example. So what will you do, how will you do it, and why do you do it? And again, try to incorporate those values, or those attributes, or those passions, those top three to five, in these questions. How did you um, figure out the value component of your brand? Obviously, you had to go through some problem-solving exercises there. Yeah. Um, but was it the type of thing where you said, I'm going to do business with a s spiritual company in my business and not a cigarette company? Is that so you kind of have definitive yes. types of customers as well. <coughs> That's right. Even though that cigarette company might do great things, but that they sell cigarettes is an issue. Right, and that's why it's called a personal branding statement, because for someone else, no judgments made, that, that may work, and that's fine. Um, but for me, it was important for me to feel like I was contributing to a company that aligned with my personal values. So... Um, how quickly did that take? I mean, obviously in a 30-second elevator yeah. speech, can you make that determination whether or not I give that person my business card? Yeah, I mean, I don't think that that happens in 30 seconds. I mean, the process... I've made uh, decisions to work with Sometimes in my business, I work with people. I work with the people. I make the choice to work with the person because the person, um, those that person's values align with my values. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, um, a great example. I talk about this. <laughs> I use this example a lot. Uh, BP is a client of mine. Okay. Um, now that did not go over well last year, was it last year? Um, and in fact, some of my BP clients were having a very difficult time being out and about and going to social functions because of what happened with the spill. And I even had experiences where if I was talking about it somewhere, people really questioned my values. How could you work with a company like that? Um, now, the team of people that I worked with are phenomenal people doing phenomenal things, okay? And um, being in the organization, I can see what they're doing. But again, you know, it's, it's personal. It's a personal branding statement. So if it aligns with who you are and the things that you want for your business, well then you have to respect that. But that was, um, going back to your original question, it was a painful process to get to to get to the point where I really understood, you know, what are my values and who are the clients that I want to go after, potential clients. I mean, you do business with a lot of good people, but they may represent companies that you don't necessarily. Yeah, and I think um, 
I think that you really do do business with people mm -hmm. at the end of the, of the day. Right. So in choosing my business, or in my business, I choose to do business with people who share similar values. And, you know, I wouldn't necessarily um, do business with a tobacco company, but, you know, 15, 17 years ago, I worked for a company that did. So, I'm tarnished. No, I'm kidding. But, um, but again, the people that you dealt with were probably very fine people, yes. but it's the company that they represented yes. did not align with your values. Right. So then you have to make a decision whether or not that's working. Yes, right. Like I said, I mean, they weren't easy decisions, and certainly, I mean, I joke about my husband, you know, he didn't understand why I was saying no to really, really great opportunities. But to me, it was important to be happy in my work. And by the way, I mean, not every, you know, it's not like you can just do that. Just say no, right? <laughs> yeah. But I, I was determined to work that much harder to find the next client that would would align. It's funny once you say no the first time, that was a lot easier to do it. You're right. Because that's what happened so to me. True. So true. Yeah. Once I, once I finally got over that hurdle, so to speak, of, well, I can't earn any money, I need this, and then finally I pay a, a client that didn't pay, and then they wanted another go around, and I'm like, that, that's great. Well, and you know, I think going back to the values, and this is an example for you, once I realized that my first value was freedom. It, like I said, it opened a whole new world for me. So I was also, you know, I was also working for clients that didn't value what I was bringing to the table. And there's, there's not much freedom in that. So that was an opening or an awakening for me. So freedom to me is not just oh, freedom to create my business and freedom to. Um, be flexible, freedom to you know, have a voice so that the client, when I show up and I sit with them at the boardroom table, really wants to hear what I have to say. It's not that they're just filling a gap or um, they value what I'm bringing to the table and there's, there's a freedom in that to be able to bring your skills and your tools to the table and they respect that and they, they want you there and they want your voice there. And so, I've worked with pl plenty of clients in the past who didn't value those things. We'd brainstorm and we'd come up with great ideas and then either they'd use them as their own or they'd say no or pretend they didn't hear me, whatever the case may be. Does that make sense? By the way, I think all of us have a little bit of freedom in us. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? <clears throat> so it's about two minutes after seven. Um, and hopefully some of you were able to get started with some of these questions. Some of you have my email. Um, I will be sending out an email after this workshop with my information, with this document, and with a couple of resources for you all, uh, like Jahari Window, that kind of thing, just to do some self-reflection. Um, I will also send you some book suggestions, so you can take a look at some, you know, just some additional resources. Uh, you'll also have my information, so if you have any questions coming out of this, please feel free to contact me. And the, um, you know, once you get your personal branding statement down, the next thing to do then is to go out to the marketplace, right? And network. So in March, Dominican's doing uh, the networking workshop, so I hope to see you all there. And we can talk about how to put your branding statement into play. 
um, for um, taking that next step in your career. Okay? Good. Thank you. Yep. Um, that's actually going to be on the main campus. Okay. Is parking difficult? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you. It was so nice to meet you all. Just make sure I have everyone's uh, contact info.